Hello and welcome to Getting Your Money's Worth, the show that focuses on value. I'm Judith West and our guest today is the Honorable Dave Walker, former Comptroller of the United States and now President of the Peter Peterson Foundation. Hello. Good to be with you. I already know. Thank you for being on. We've been wanting to get you since Washington and I already know it's okay to call you Dave. So. That's right. And I'm Judy. Okay. But just to set the stage, um, what does the Comptroller General do? Well, as Comptroller General of the United States, I was the CEO of the Government Accountability Office, or the GAO, and the de facto Chief Accountability Officer of the United States Government, basically the Chief Auditor. Okay, so I just want to get, I just want to get this out. You oversaw how money, did you, could you, did you impact on how money was spent, or did you oversee how, see it after the fact, after it was spent? But after the fact. Okay. In other words, we did audits, investigations, program evaluations, after, policy analyses after the fact. So this whole debacle is not your fault? Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> okay, fact, I just although we did make a number of recommendations that would have made it, frankly, better, better okay. and prevented a lot but of But you problems. didn't spend it. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Okay, I just want to get that. Good. Okay, so now, and while you were there, before you joined the Peter Peterson Foundation, and you help me out, I want to be sure, because there's a lot sure. of stuff here. The Peter Peterson Foundation cares about America's future. Right. We're trying to create a better future. We're trying to basically promote more responsibility and accountability today to create more opportunity tomorrow. Yeah. And one of the, the big issues, obviously, is our future, is, is our fiscal conditions, our fiscal prudence. Right. Our financial condition okay, is right. terrible. It's getting worse day by day. Yeah. Well, and when you were, but when you were in Washington, Dave, uh, is it Dave or David? Dave. Dave. When you were in Washington, Dave, you were pretty upset about the way things were then. As a matter of fact, I think that was one of the impetuses for you to join the Peter Peterson Foundation. Well, that's correct. Okay. I so I just want to say, if you were worried then, how about now? Oh, you it's must much be, worse. You must There's be no apoplectic. Question. There's no question. I mean, when I came into office in uh, November of 1998, uh, we, were, we were in surplus. Uh, it w by the end of 2000, we had projected surpluses for many years. Uh, the budget controls that have been put in place had helped to take us from large and growing deficits to large and growing surpluses. Now we're in a situation where we're talking about trillion dollar deficits uh, for several years into the future and debt has doubled I, basically. I want to ask you, and I, I, again, you're going to help me with the numbers because this is your bailiwick and not mine. How much, how, how many trillions does the government spend annually? Over $3 trillion a year. And growing. And growing and rapidly, right. unfortunately. And that is before our $1 trillion bailout. No, that, that's, before, that's the, before the bailouts okay. and okay. before the stimulus so program. I just have a chart here, and please, I want to be sure it's up correctly, because it's hard to know what a trillion is. And we have here, the a million seconds is 12 days, a billion seconds is 31 years, and a trillion seconds is almost 32,000 years. So that means that we're spending the equivalent of over 100,000 years every year. Yeah, before there were ever homo sapiens. Well, that's right. Well, oh my gosh, that's, you know. It's real who, money. Right, I was gonna say, do you, I, I, I read this, a uh, former Senator Eric Derrickson from Chicago, from Illinois. He Dirksen, said, right, Dirksen, yeah. He said, a billion here, a billion here, there, and pretty soon you're talking about real money. That's right. Well, that was when the dollar was worth something. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, this this is now, you know, yeah. now I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm not gonna read about a trillion dollars quite so easily anymore. This is a big swallow. Well, you, it's 12 zeros to the right of the number, and that's without pennies. And, you know, it's really much more impressive when you write it out. Yes. Okay. So, so now that we have that, now that we know it's a lot of money, um, rather than, well, let me ask you quickly, and then I want to go on. I don't want to go spend time on how we got there, because there's plenty of blame to go around. But I sure. do want to f spend time with you, because you're a man of solutions on how, what we're going to do. Uh, but just to set the stage, you said that when you joined, there were surpluses. Right. Tell me something. Did you stop looking? Did you stop watching? How did we get? Oh, how, no, do, no. how do we get to this? Uh, I don't want to kid us, but how do we get to this nutty place that we're in? Well, first, the government wastes a lot of money every year, even if it's running surpluses uh, or deficits. And so the GAO was focused on how to improve economy efficiency, effectiveness, ethics, and equity. It's even more of a problem when you're running big deficits because we're basically mortgaging the future of the country and our kids and grandkids right now at record rates. 
uh, what happened was the budget controls that helped us go from large and growing deficits to large and growing surpluses expired at the end of 2002. Okay. Things got totally out of control. It was you know, unfunded war costs, unfunded entitlement expansions, unfunded additional spending, and unfunded tax cuts. So all the regulations all. just halted? Well, basically, the constraints that were in the law that, that helped us provide fiscal discipline expired at, two th at the end of 2002, and Washington has been totally out of control and ever since. Spending then. went nuts. Spending went nuts, and you know the other thing is, is there were ranges of tax cuts, and you know when you do a tax cut that's that's paid for with more debt, that's not a tax cut. That is a deferred tax increase right. with interest on our kids and grandkids. Right. Okay, so, we, so we're there now. And now, of course, we're talking about another trillion dollars, another 32 years, right. uh, 32,000 years of bailout. Uh, the one thing that was in, if there's such a thing as a sunny light to this bailout that was encouraging, Dave, was the fact that our President Obama promised that this was going to be a bargain because this was going to be a moment in time when we could fix the budget mess, and I'm using his words, budget mess, but that we could set in place strategies for some long-term cures. Am well, I, am, am I, am I basically, quoting I think, it wrong? Am you know, I, he, right? the President and, Obama has talked about the fact that he wants to achieve a grand bargain during right. his presidency, which means that we need to reform Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, we need to constrain and reprioritize spending, and we need to reform our tax laws in a way that will generate more revenues. That's what that means. Okay. So having said that, though, this is, this, this is a topic that's near and dear to your heart, these entitlements, which are the Social Security and the health care costs. Right. Do you see that that kind of long, do you see that this bailout package is going to help government run more, help, help government run smoother? Well, there's several things going on. First, there's the stimulus, okay, which is now $900 billion, of which only a fraction of it is really stimulus. A lot of it is investments, you know, in the future, and the, people will debate whether well, they make sense or not. Even. Right, okay. Uh, there's the bailouts, which has to do with, you know, the financial services industry, the automobile companies. They're a separate issue. That's an additional price tag. That's on top of on the top stimulus of program. And what President Obama was talking about with regard to the grand bargain is, is that you know, while spending a lot of money on the stimulus program and these bailouts is a problem and it's a concern, you know, we are underwater $56 trillion with regard to unfunded Social Security and Medicare promises and other debt and other liabilities. We ultimately are going to have to come to grips with that. Uh, and that's what he's talking about, how can we do yeah, that? Yeah, but if anything, if what I, but, but those entitlements are kind of on autopilot. They are, and that's part of the problem. Right and now, 60, you, over 60% of the budget is on autopilot. If, if, if these entitlements, and as a matter of fact, the present uh, bailout package includes increased um, health care, uh, uh, services, yeah. health services, if that piece is kind of on autopilot, um, where is the flexibility to fix well, the budget mess? Look, it, it, the shocking thing is, is if you look at the federal budget today, over 60% of it is on autopilot, and stated differently, less than 40% of it has anything to do with what the founding fathers intended government to do. So government has grown. It's a bloated bureaucracy. Most of it's on autopilot. We're going to have to re-engineer the base of government. Social Security is going to be there. It's actually the least problem. Oh, yeah. Well, that's you know, good to know. Yeah. Health care is a much bigger problem. For example, Medicare is five times greater a problem than Social Security. So we can, we can solve these problems, but, but it's going to require tough choices. Well, who is the we? Some. We, the American people, ultimately, because you, know, you have to keep in mind, we're in a democracy. And so ultimately what Washington elected officials do or don't do, we're responsible for. You know, if they're not doing the right thing, then we hold ourselves responsible and accountable. So the, the public, frankly, has to be more outraged. They ought to be outraged. They, they ought to be okay? outraged. They ought to be outraged. They, but I don't, I don't see them doing much. Okay? I mean, I mean, they ought to show up at town hall meetings and, you know, hold, hold you know, some after accountability all, After all, Dave, how, yeah, you know, yeah. how is this all going to get paid for? We are mortgaging the Who's future of our kids this? and grandkids. All what right is now, the average one hundred eighty-five thousand dollars in it's America. About a well, right now it's about one hundred eighty-four thousand dollars per American. So that means every newborn baby that comes into this world has one hundred eighty-four thousand oh dollars debt. No those, wonder they cry. Right? Think of those oct octuplets. Those eight babies <laughs> oh, that were oh born. No one. That's a different they, story. They got, I don't want to go. They there. got eight times one hundred eighty-five thousand. Yeah, oh yeah. 000. Well, you know, she already had six. So right, that's a so different that's story. That's a different story. Yeah, because uh, after all, you know that. That, 
the average the average citizen didn't did, didn't cause this to happen. Well, or did they? Well, the the average citizen votes for their elected official. All right, and they decide whether or not they're going to reelect their elected official. What's been happening lately is a we've been spending way more money than we than, than we than we have revenues for, and there hasn't been any accountability for that. All right. You know, where there has not been enough outrage from the citizenry, okay. and well, that's that, got to change. Okay, I want to finish on this note, what can we do, because that's what... Sure. Um, you think you're getting one person, and then you elect it, and, and sometimes after you elect the person, you get somebody else. There, there seems to me that most of us feel that there's some kind of a leadership deficit. There's, some, there's something missing. It's the biggest deficit this country has. The biggest, almost the best, and it's yeah. not just in government, it's also in the private sector. Exactly. Sector well, the absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and we're, we, that's, that's a different show. So, again, what, what is it with America that suddenly we can't, we can't grow, we can't get good, we can't grow leaders? Well, it's sad, you know, it we've, sad. we've seen for some of these cabinet positions where they said this is the only person who can do the, do the job. We have over 300 million people in I this know. country. If we're down to one person per job, we're in deep trouble. Look, we actually have a lot of talent out there that doesn't want to get involved uh, in politics because they, they, they're concerned with regard to the scrutiny and they're frustrated with regard to dysfunctionality of government. Look, we need to make sure that we're electing people who will do what's right for this country. We need, to, we need to reward them when they do the right thing, even though it involves tough choices, and we need to hold them accountable if they do nothing. And you know, elected officials you know, will pay attention to people who call their local office. They will pay attention to people who show up in town hall meetings. They'll pay attention to you know, correspondence that they get in their local office, what happens in the local media. That's what yeah. politicians care about. And, we, and this is solvable. Absolutely, this we can solve solvable. the problem. This is, yeah, this is mean, solvable. Right. But it threatens our future yeah. if we don't solve right. it soon. But it is solvable, and there are things. I mean, I just read one thing that somebody suggested to finish our podcast that, you know, um, maybe more prosperous seniors spend a little bit more on their own private health care. Well, I think after one of the things all, we're going to have. Well, after for, all, our president asked yeah. us to sacrifice a little. I think there's no question that people who are better off ought to pay higher premiums for Medicare than they pay okay. right now. Okay. So. First off, I, thanks for being on the show. I want to finish on a positive note. A, it's solvable. Absolutely. This is this company. This if it wasn't solvable, I wouldn't be here. wouldn't be here, and I wouldn't either. And this show is called Getting Your Money's Worth. There is a way for Americans to get their money's worth out of government. There is, but we have to understand that you cannot continue to spend more money than you make forever without there being adverse consequences. You're spending somebody else's money. You're spending your kids' and grandkids' money. Right, right. Yeah. Well, you know, um, for some of us feel like to turn government around um, might be a miracle. But I'm going to end with words from David Ben-Gurion. And he said that if you don't believe in a miracle, you're not a realist. <laughs> I believe in miracles. Yeah, so do I. I want to thank it's you very you, much Jay. for being thank on the show. Much. I think you clarified uh, things for us. And I want to thank everyone for watching. I'm Judith West, getting your money's worth. Thank you.